Hello. It is Monday here today. We have matched Arcadia 4. Is currently rank 16. Uh, you know, Shindra is doing a solid job of dodging us. Well, I guess, honestly, we fought them once this season. We haven't fought any of the other, like, top 10 guilds, it feels like. Maybe, like, one or two of them. So, interesting matchmaking, uh, as per usual. But anyways... Anyways, so we, there's a lot of unscouted towers for some reason at this point in time. Normally everything's scouted, I think, but yeah, I'm probably just gonna... At least two scouts. I might have to hit Stronghold. Maybe. I'm not actually sure. But we're starting it off with this thing right here. And it's Alaya Assyria. Yes, I, I quite like the comp. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, Assyria resets Laya, gain 10 souls off of the Unseen Observer, Soulburn into the Euphine. Obviously, it's not 30k 3f Euphine. That would never happen to me. Okay, I think if it does happen to me, I immediately lose, so maybe I should stop doing this comp. Because <laughs> I know it exists, and I know it can hurt me. <laughs> uh, let's see, what, what, what are they bringing? They're bringing Genua. Uh-huh. Wait. Uh-huh. Isn't Poly Genua kind of OP into this defense, now that I think about it? Like, uh, yes, it kind of is. Wait, no, it's not. You have to outspeed. Now, if you bring Beatom, you don't necessarily have to outspeed. Um, because if your Beatom's faster than their DDR, you get buff stacked because, okay, well, I guess now you're racing. But you do get, uh, two buffs here, skill and low fire immunity, and then two buffs here, barrier, and... Oh wait, no, 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 it wouldn't, it wouldn't, because these are two duration and these are also two duration, so the, uh, these ones would get stripped first. Uh, the immunity would get stripped first. I'm not sure where skill null actually goes in the, uh, buff stacking, I'm assuming, because it doesn't have a duration, it's like, one of the first buffs to get stripped, probably, but anyways, anyways, uh, y YOLO comp, I've never YOLO comped in my life, and then round two, uh, Poly Gala seems pretty good here under this, like, because we want to one tap the Laya and then we want to kill the Candy pretty fast, and then we want to ignore this Karuna's existence. So, uh, we're just going to be sending it into the uh, Laya here. And because we have Arable on Prelusha and the uh, Genua artifact on our Gala plus Arable S3, we have enough barriers to where even if the Lendy counters a bit, I shouldn't be dying to her, probably. And I should be able to just like S1 or twice. Hopefully not more than little thing more than that to kill the Landy. Obviously she could probably pop off, but I think Gala still has good odds here, even if she does pop off. Uh okay, I, I really should stop doing this for scouts though. This is not a good comp for scout. But yeah, that's just the normal price area here. Uh yes, sending. Okay, wait, no, I, I don't wanna send it, honestly. The more I talk think about 3F AU Fiend existing and people having lost to it, the more I don't want to run this. <laughs> I don't know, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. I'm sure. Okay, it's fine. The DDR got the shield. Okay, I think if you see the barrier go on the Euphine, though, maybe you don't go for her. Anyways. Um, I have zero effectiveness on my S area. But, shouldn't matter too much here. Oh, he's actually zero ER. Maybe. Maybe he's also 30k health though. Okay, and then F2. Because you're gonna get slept next turn anyways. Although you can hold it, but I kinda wanted to trust Briar S3 since my uh, Saria was able to strip the DDR. So I might land on Buffable. Counter. Counter Potion Vial? Huh? <laughs> that is a build.
I guess Conk doesn't get Venomed, which is good. Um, just hit here. And here again, because the light is going to kill the DDR here. Because it's the only real threat. Oh, wrong Assyria. I think I lose my Briar then. Oh wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Dots on this play. So, oh wait, no, Kong's pressing S2 here, never mind. It's just reset. Laya. I was gonna say reset Briar and go for the kill. But I don't need to do that. Because Laya suddenly has S3 again. <laughs> Very good, very good. I was about to act shocked that I outsped their Laya. I'm not that slow. Okay, my Polaris is pretty slow. I kind of maybe took away too much of her fast gear for Pera. Obviously, this procs the Krina, but we have barriers. It doesn't really matter too much. Like, barrier from there. Going into immunity. And we put up another barrier to replenish our barrier. And stun the Krina as well. I wonder if it. Ah, just stun this. Yeah, that's about as much damage as I was expecting. Obviously, she could counter Sabre Heal the Fall. And that's a bit unfortunate if it happens, but uh, you know, they're kinda of low tempo. And then suddenly I have S3 again on my gala. So I think pull this kills. Well, never mind. S1 from Gala kills. At the very least. Okay, okay, okay. Good attack, great attack. Unlosable attack even. Uh, anyways, on to something else here. Okay, got something else set up here. Uh, just making sure nobody has trying to yank my tower. Okay, okay, it's not happening. That's good, that's good. Um, so, R2, I'm literally sending the same thing again. And, you know, it has the same odds as before. Good stuff, good stuff. Uh, and it plays out. Exactly the same, except instead of Krina, it's Genoa, who is also going into the Barrier Gala. I guess the main difference here is that um, we don't have the aggro split necessarily once the uh, Lyo is gone, right? Uh, we still have we have two things potentially hitting into our Gala, which isn't ideal, but they shouldn't be alive for long enough for it to matter, as you saw. Um, same builds as before, though. Warhorn here for more damage. Uh, this kind of okay. This gala build is not ideal. I can build a way better gala. Like, uh, hold on, hold on. If I had a good torrent sword, I could make like a pretty cracked, uh, speed gala. But let's, let's just visualize really quick. Uh, wait, wait. I don't know. This one, maybe. Sure. My, as you can see, my speed gear is kind of cracked here. Uh, let's go this one. And then uh, this piece, and then uh, this piece, and then uh, we can imagine that there's flat attack modded onto this piece, yes? Like, like, imagine I had like, you know, 16 speed here or something, with like, not two rolls in the crit chance. Maybe like 4k 320, 280 speed, that'd be a pretty good build for this. Um, we do not have that build though. We're using this build, which is 4.6, 300, with 100 ER, literally for fun here. It is, there is nothing debuffing me on the right side of the screen. Uh, wait, no, no, I'm playing around. Okay, hear me out. Okay, no, this is not real, but I'm playing around Alabaster on Genua. Yes, that's exactly right. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Imagine.
Alabastron. Okay, if it's on Alabastron, then he has effectiveness and I'm not actually resisting. Alabastron, Genoa, unhealables, your gala. What do you. <laughs> uh, okay, to be fair, generally they don't even break the barrier, do they? Huh. That is something. Anyways, uh, that's how round two plays out. For round one, it's a stray, so we kind of just want him to go into a target that uh, comes back or it doesn't die. And generally, I like to do Abigail uh, for her backline immortality plus a uh, Terran or Royal Guard into these Zeo Stray's defenses. Uh, but in this case, they have a Karina, so it was kind of hard to uh, justify bringing Abigail. Because generally you want Abigail, turn or guard, and then a support to like, you know, heal your team up. Uh, but we, we, we don't get that luxury here uh, because of the critic. Well, I mean, you could probably still pull it off. Because like, realistically, are they going to win? Uh, versus like, is Krina going to be a soul weaver? Uh, probably not. Like, <laughs> if you're, I'm pretty sure Destina wins in a 1v1 with Karina if it came down to it. Uh, but anyways, uh, instead we're uh, just doing a highest HP, Yulha, on Holy Sack just because she was already geared pretty high health. Uh, so just slam Sack on her and suddenly it's a good unit. And we want Doris. Uh, we want a light unit because uh, they are getting another turn here. Um, Doris is pretty good because they're both dark. So those boxes are both checked. Something to tank the uh, Stray's S3 and something to tank the dark units afterwards. And then we just need another thing that tanks the Zeo S3 now. Ideally, you have the Holy Sack unit as your fastest on the team. But I'm not bothering to tune that. Uh, so we're just slamming Laya. We have the prop barrier, so we're realistically not taking that much damage from the Zeo S3. And we can push our Yulha up to kill the Karina early, and then it should just be uh, pretty straightforward. Stray Zeo versus Doris. They, they can't win. Spoiler alert. Um, obviously, my Doris can get death broken by the Karina here, though, because I'm only 130 ER. Like, you know, that just requires them having like one or two effectiveness rolls on their gear to be able to death break me. But Doris is kind of tanky versus dark units. Like if she gets death buff up, she, she's not dying probably, maybe. Okay, maybe she would die. But that's why I've got Water's Origin on her versus like another artifact, like uh, Ice Crystal. Uh, just because, you know, she's the only thing taking damage here. Like everything is baited into the Doras outside of the Stray's S3 damage. Like everything goes into her. Um, but yeah, it should be pretty straightforward. Like, this defense doesn't seem too threatening, probably. Um, yeah, worst case scenario, Doris dies, but Laya solos. <laughs> I can see it happening. Uh, but yeah, Dora Dor Dor shouldn't die for... Uh, shouldn't die before Laya gets her S3 and gets the Laya machine rolling. Anyways, let's just send it here. You know, okay, I was unironically going to send a uh, attack into this that was going to, uh, I was going to use a two star unit that dies to the Zeo S3 and pushes my strays up with a Zero Comet in order to S3 the current. <laughs> I, I was legitimately something I considered doing <laughs> and I am very glad I did not um I do not want to proc the Krina actually mm. I think if I land blind on Zeo or redirect or revoke it's actually pretty good <laughs> okay I kind of just tanked it so that's good. Obviously this kind of messes things up a little bit, but the only messing up that's happened here is that my Doris is, uh, you know, doesn't get a press S2 this turn. 
Which does make it kind of sketchy, but the credit is gone now. I resisted the death break as well. So I'm gonna just do this. And my Yule House still has another life. So like even if I lose my Doris here, it's pretty chilling. Um I kind of want to get a duel with Yule House still though. Like just to, you know, get rid of some of the pressure if I can at all. Obviously blind is also helpful. In theory. In practice, maybe not. Dude, they're not doing enough damage to proc my waters. Um, yeah. I have S3 next turn on my Lya. Wow. And Doris is full health now. Okay, if it were Tachi strays, I would have taken a lot more damage. Also, the blind did nothing. And if I get death broken by the Krina, I guess it could have been awkward. But immunity on my Doris would have been useless at the very least, so that's good to know. Okay, uh, time to get 20k Lyad, because clearly this guy is actually cooking. Uh, what else can you actually bring into this? Nah, just slam Gala. Don't even think about it. Get Elbrus immediately, that's okay though. That's why I have the barrier. Well, the thing with Arrowall actually is... You can... she does too much damage if she misses the stun. And the Genoa gets the proc. I almost don't want to press here. Especially because I have the full uh, value 2 turn barrier here. So let's just S1 here and get countered. No? Okay, we're chilling then. Like, this is just maximizing our barrier value. Um, we'll go for the stun here now. Because it matters a lot less. Uh, especially since the candy's down, so there's no, like, robbery potential. Uh, but, like, if Airwall crits, it definitely does do enough. Uh, to bring the Genoa below half. Okay, I'm not sure if their defense was ungeared or it was actually trapped for that, though. Regardless, I'm really glad I didn't try to uh, style on them with the... I was gonna do level 1 Tamarin as my uh, fodder unit to die to the Zeo S3. <laughs> Anyways. Do I need to hit Stronghold? I kind of don't want to hit Stronghold. Wait, what is Stronghold? Oh, it's this defense? Uh, we'll just see. I don't know. Okay, okay, okay. Last hit here. Uh, I am just trusting they <laughs> can down Stronghold. I mean, there's six attacks and they need to... Uh, and if literally all of them draw, the Stronghold will fall. So it should be fine, right? Right. Uh, so we're hitting this, and you might be familiar with this round two composition. Uh, I think it works here <laughs> too. Um, Polidus is obviously good into the shoe. Arrow is good into the shoe. And Gala is good into the Genoa, and Elena isn't a defense unit, so I think we're kind of chilling. And then round one, um, Dark Corvus baits is pretty good into uh, Senya for baiting her, because, well, he's very high health, so he doesn't really care about getting his defense 100% pent. Like, I'll be close to 40k health here. Um, so, you know, even if she does, like, what, close to maybe 10k? You know, that's getting healed by just one Momo button press. Um, and then, you know, baits the Aiden. And then Senya's not really a unit in this composition. Obviously, they just got the double Senya synergy. But I, I gotta slam my own Senya. Yeah. Uh, I've just been running around Pro Arius. I think it's a decent build. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty good for specifically this defense as well, I suppose. Uh, nothing else to really say. It could be like any knight here. I need to win. 
but Senya sounded fun. And I think the barrier and her Biden blasting them back could be relevant, maybe? I don't know. Um, <laughs> we'll just have to see. I, I don't think she'll really do a whole lot here, though, admittedly. Because if I do press... <laughs> Excuse me. If I do press my S3, I do end up procking their Senya most likely, so... You know, I, I might refrain from doing that. Uh, but yeah, it's just Dark Harvest Solo, isn't it? Mm, bet you've never seen one of these before. And yeah, it's just a height ER Momo. She'll appreciate the Arias, I suppose. And I shouldn't ever die to a Senya. Although, I'm not on Rod. Rod would be better. But maybe 25 ER is relevant, huh? Maybe it is. Okay, it's probably not. And I should do... Rod of Everilis. Uh, because yeah, there's 21% health versus 9%. So, you know, it's pretty substantial. And if I get provoked by the Senya fuck, I don't think 25 ER would have made a difference in that case. Maybe. Yeah, it's just mostly leftover gear, anyways. So. I've never been punished for using leftover gear in an attack in my life. Okay, let's send it. Okay, fast set? Okay, that's like 210 speed, that's not fast. Um, no real reason to S3 anything here. Okay, so this Senya S3 is my Dark Corvus. Probably, is it a 3F build? I don't know, actually. And I'm in pretty good health. Yep. Oh. Um. Yeah, for what it's worth, the Senya did have a bit of effectiveness, because my Dark Harvest was 100 ER, as you might have saw. Well, that's not unexpected. Anyways, let's just... Oh wait, does this make my Dark Corvus cut the Momo? No, it's only 30% push, right? So that puts me up to 80% and my Momo is 87%. Wow. Math. And then my team's full health. Uh, I don't think this actually kills. So I'll probably have. Oh, actually, it probably kills. Never mind. I chunked him pretty hard with my Senya. Okay, it barely killed. The Aiden missed crit. I repeat. The Aiden missed crit. Um, ha. Huh. Good job, Aiden, I guess. Let's hit here. The Aiden is on Proof of Valor. I see. What is this doing? Bro, it's 14k proof of valor. Who is going to cleave that defense? You got Senya with Aiden in the back. Nobody's gonna try to cleave that, bro. <laughs> We're just intentionally cycling the Aiden. Oh, wait, actually, we wanna go Aiden last. Hopefully, the Aiden doesn't lap us. Oh, well, just because Aiden's hitting Dark Corvus is literally the only reason. And also, uh, Senya, yeah, I don't want to watch her S2 animation. Okay. Good soul burn, good soul burn. Like, if it were injury aid in Proof of Valor, that kind of makes sense at least, right? Because you... Uh, you know, you can potentially tank the Dark Corvus S3. But like, what is this doing? Oh, I mean, should I S on Aiden? 
because then she did go ahead of Dark Corvus. Oh well. This just does no damage. <laughs> also, I keep expecting ML Senya to provoke. But she is not provoking. I, I don't even have double mitt on my Dark Corvus and he's just taking no damage. Also, evading is better. Like, it's 14k health. What is it supposed to be tanking at 14k health? Wait. Am I flaming this defense too hard? I don't know what they were cooking. Yeah. The, she was on Sweet Miracle, actually. Which is... <laughs> it means it's very likely my Gala actually pens her. Uh, especially at that speed. Also, this kind of is ideal tuning for me. Oh. Oh. Uh, He's gone. I'm assuming this thing's ER. I didn't tag it at all. So I might as well just go for this, but he has ER buff. So it's not really gonna... Yeah. But, I mean, uh, normal Juno doesn't beat Gala in a 1v1. I don't see why ER Juno would beat Gala in a 1v1. Oh, nice duel, nice duel, Shinoma. Uh, I don't know. Let's just get this down first. And then Jinya can do whatever he wants, I guess. Although, this is like actually a pretty bad window for me. Because, like, you can kind of see my Gala's all the way back here. I'm pretty sure I'm faster than him. So it doesn't actually matter. But that was like, uh, the turn I have a barrier down time. So if he were speed Janua, it would be a bit more awkward. Well, I'm pretty sure I can survive more than four hits. So I, I don't think I was actually in any real danger. Okay, triple scout video, no way, who would have thought? I've never seen it happen before. Um, yes. I'm being scouted now. Good job, me. Uh, but that's it for me. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Okay, seriously though, what? Proof of Valor Aiden didn't make sense here. Like, this was a good trap. Like, having Zio go second is a really good trap. Because a lot of people will just bring, like, General Purgus and stuff into you. Um. Uh, or. Wait, okay, I don't think. Like, I, I, I assure you, it probably gets shields. Um, uh, but. This one? A bit questionable. Anyways. Goodbye for real.